Adams is taking over my unloading duty. Is that all right with you, sir? Well, that's okay, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to seeing you, brother. Sure am. It's been a long time. By the way, what's he doing in London? He works for a travel agency, sort of a courier. Sure gets around Paris, Rome, Madrid. Who wouldn't be a land lover with all those railroad tickets? Thank you, sir. Going ashore already? Have special food with the captain. How come? Well, I uh, recommended him for promotion. <laughs> well, enjoy yourself. Thanks. Oh, uh, Bill. Thanks for taking over. Oh, I love it. You see my brother? Tell him I'm staying at his hotel. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Hey, Greg. Yeah. You say it in four days' time. Don't forget, will you? Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> Yes, sir? Do you have a Larry Stevens staying here? Stevens? We did have a Mr. Stevens with us, but he left about six months ago. Six months? Yes, he left quite suddenly. He didn't leave a forwarding address, did he? No, sir. I'm holding two letters for him in case he shows up. May I see them? Yes, of course. Thanks. Here's one I wrote myself. I'm his brother. May I take charge of these? Yes, of course, sir. Thanks. Got a single room? Yes, that can be arranged. Third floor? Fine. Will you take charge of this bag for me and I'll check in later. Very good, sir. Thank you. It'll be 12 pounds. Yes, sir? I'd like to see the manager, please. I'm afraid Mr. Harris is away, sir. How long will he be gone? He'll be gone for two or three days, sir. Can I help you? Well, I'm trying to locate a fellow named Larry Stevens. He used to work here. Here's a reference that was left at his hotel. It wasn't picked up. You know where I can find him? Well, I've only been here a few weeks myself, sir. The rest of the staff have gone. Well, uh, don't you have any records? I don't in the personnel book, sir. Why were you inquiring about Larry Stevens? Why, do you know him? I did, slightly. He's my brother. Do you know where I can find him? Well, I... Well? I'm sorry. I must have been thinking of someone else. But your ticket, miss. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. There's no record of Mr. Stevens here. Well, uh, do you think he might be at some other branch? He wouldn't have the company's reference, sir, if he'd been transferred. I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. Yeah, sure. Thanks. 
That's all right. You can keep them. Hey. Why are you following me? Following you? <laughs> you must be out of your mind. I never saw you before. Come here. I tell you, I never saw you before. Let go of me or there'll be trouble. There is trouble. No, wait a minute. Give me a break, can't you? I'm in a difficult position, you understand? If I open my mouth and talk and he finds out about it, he'll kill me. Who'll kill you? I'm not in a position to disclose that. Don't worry, nobody's gonna kill you. If they do, I'll speak sharply to them. you to follow him? He caught up with me. Oh, yes? Didn't find out nothing from me, though. You're much too smart, Crossan, aren't you? You just let him tell you. All right, I'll handle him. I saw her this afternoon in the Worldwide Travel Agency. Uh-huh. She spoke to Stevens. Is that so? She was, she was booking herself a ticket to someplace or other. some sense. All I can tell you is this. That is in trouble. Oh? Who with? Well, the police. You see, Larry was a member of this club, but I'm afraid he abused our hospitality. Yeah, how? He introduced undesirable characters, Mr. Stevens. He used the club for illicit dealings. And passed stolen property. But as I say, I like the boy. I did him a number of good turns, and that was the way he showed his gratitude. The kindest thing for me to do is to warn you not to look for him. And now, if you'll excuse me. Wait a second. If you find your brother, the police may be just one jump ahead of you. Is that a threat? Have a drink in the house. 
We've got a nice little show coming up presently. Why don't you stay and enjoy yourself? Look after you. Again. I like hearing it myself. Look, you started to be helpful this afternoon. Why did you stop? I thought I knew the person you were inquiring about. Well, you had the name right, Larry Stevens. I made a mistake. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to change for my next number. Suppose you carry on where you left off this afternoon. There's nothing I can tell you. You're scared of something, aren't you? What is it? All right, look, give me a lead, anything. Some friend of Larry, someone I can talk to. There's a boxer by the name of Dave Leary. He's fighting at the Grand Stadium tonight. He knew your brother better than I did. How did you get to know Larry? Just came, Mr. Durant. Thank you. Dave Leary, huh? Well, thanks to something. Boxing well, Dave. Keep moving around. Use your left hand, but what's his right? That's all right, Hattie boy. You can ring up your mum and say you'll be home early. Right? He'll be all right, Brad. <laughs> what round was that? Hard. Right. Never thought Barney could take it. You just got in? Yeah. Pity. You missed five classical rounds. Great pity. You know? Yeah. Who? Leary. Yes. Ah, knew when he was in the boxing booze. You know, the fairground. Chip. Take it down. No, no thanks. Slogging match. My name's Carter. Stevens. Glad I know you, Stevens. In American, aren't you? Yeah. Stevens. <laughs> no relation to these Stevens, are you? <laughs> yeah, he's on the roof! Come on, Davey! That's it! Come on! Come on, Davey! You're talking about what's Stevens? Larry Stevens, of course, a murderer. Come on! Keep him busy, boy! Why not? What did you say? What's the matter with you? What's the fight, can't what's you? What's this about Larry Stevens? Answer me! Yeah, let me go! I want to know! Don't you read the flaming newspapers? I ain't gonna blow things Stevens this week. Friend of Dave Leary's, a yank, like you. Oh, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Take your hands off me. What's a, what's a fight? <laughs> Don't bother to knock, will you? Thanks, I won't. I hear you talk to Stevens this afternoon. I mean the one they're not going to hang. <sighs> Crossing gets around, doesn't he? He earns his keep. Just about. Would you mind putting that down, please? Pretty sensitive about your father, aren't you? What are you going to Paris for? To see him? Perhaps. Tonight? I'm surprised Crossan didn't tell you that. My plane leaves at midnight. Crossan did tell me. You won't be on the plane, my sweetheart. I've cancelled the booking. You what? You're under contract. There's certain things you can't do, like flying to Paris. Suppose you cracked up, I'd be lost without you. Now, why don't you be sensible? You're not helping your father by running out on me. I'm not helping him by staying. Well, we did it again, Tommy boy. Straight in, just like you drew it on the plan. <laughs> Oh, we're on our way, Tom. Come in. Nice going, fella. Ah, oh, thanks. Glad you liked it. Here, are you a reporter? 
I've got something you can write. I've got muscles I haven't even used yet. <laughs> and you know, I've had 482 fights in my career, 42 of them with men. <laughs> 42 of them with men. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a reporter. I just want to talk to you for a moment. Oh, <laughs> well, make yourself at home. Thanks. I was just telling Tom about the fight. It worked a treat. I could have stopped him in the third, but I took it to the sixth. You've got to give them a show for their money. Are you sure you're not a reporter? Quite sure. Oh, can I do anything for you? Maybe I uh, hear you're a friend of Larry Stevens. What did you say? I said I hear you're a friend of Larry Stevens. What is this? I'm Greg Stevens, Larry's brother. Okay, Tommy, I can manage myself now. Only I'm thirsty. Be a pal and go and get me a bottle of lemonade, will you? There's a good lad. <laughs> oh, he's a great little second, Tommy. There's nothing about the fight game he doesn't know. The only trouble is he's mutton, Jeff, and sugar plum. <laughs> That's old English for deaf and dumb. I had some crazy talk while I was out there tonight. Somebody was saying that Larry was up on a murder rap. Tonight? You mean to say you only heard it tonight? That's right. Well, where have you been? Well, sea mostly. China waters. Shanghai, Hong Kong. Don't you get news bulletins at sea? I didn't get that one. Oh, what a reception for you. Yeah, I know, Larry. We were buddies. Oh, he's a nice kid. Hard to figure out, though. You know, he never even mentioned he had a brother. Well, is it true about the murder rap, I mean? Yes, chum, I'm afraid it is. When does he... Thursday. Three days from now. Larry was a crazy kid, I know, but... Who was it? He shot a man by the name of Williams. Manager of the Gay Mars Club. You know it? Yeah. Larry phoned me and told me to meet him there. He was just, just back from Paris. By the time I arrived, the place was stiff with cops and... Larry was arrested. What was it all about? I don't know. Look, pal. Why don't you have a word with Larry's lawyer? A bloke by the name of Winslow. He'll be able to tell you all you want to know. Me? I might get things mixed up a bit. You'll want to see Larry. Winslow can fix that for you. Look. Here's my card. I'll write Winslow's address on the back. And if there's anything I can do, you just look me up. Thanks. Oh, and you will wish the kid the best of luck for me, won't you? Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks, Tommy. Oh, well, we certainly put one over on them tonight, didn't we? Thanks, boy. I'm afraid the case against your brother was quite conclusive. We did everything possible. They tried for an appeal, naturally. Still a few things I don't understand, Mr. Winslow. For instance, I thought my brother was a member of the Gay Match Club, but here it says he worked for the place. Oh, yes. Natural development of his agency connections. Not unusual, he introduced parties to the club. Mm. On a commission basis? Yes. According to the evidence here, my brother went to the club around 10.30. He saw Williams and a quarrel was overheard. Overheard by who? One of the waiters. He alleges that your brother threatened Williams. Did anybody else hear the quarrel besides the waiter? Oh, yes. Mario Sotago, the owner of the place, and several of the guests. I see. At approximately 11 p.m., Stevens went in to see Williams. He'd been drinking. Shortly afterwards, the waiter went to the office with a message. There was no reply and the door was locked. He thought something might be wrong and called Sotago. They forced the door open. Williams was dead. He'd been shot. Stevens was in a dazed condition. The revolver which fired the fatal bullet was on the floor beside him. My brother never carried a gun. Who did it belong to, Williams? No, it was stolen property. Your brother's fingerprints were the only ones on it. What did he have to say? He couldn't remember a thing that happened. Come in. I spoke to the prison governor. He said Mr. Stevens can see his brother this morning. Good. Was there any other news? No, sir. I see. Thanks. We were hoping for news of a reprieve. Well, I suppose you're pretty anxious to see him. Of course. I'll drop Oh, uh, may I take this brief along with me? I want to look it over tonight. Certainly. Thanks. Oh, uh, 
Uh, thanks for fixing that for me. It's quite all right. What was the motive supposed to have been? Williams was a known smuggler. The police theory was that your brother was inveigled into the racket by him. They quarreled over money and the rest you know. But what proof did they have that Larry was mixed up with Williams? Four uncut diamonds were found in your brother's pocket. expecting to see you. What happened, kid? I didn't do it, Gregor. Oh, sure, I know you've heard the facts. They, they look like the straight bill of goods. All I know is I didn't shoot Williams. I believe you. Now just relax and tell me everything you know. Well, I, I wanted to see Williams. Talked to him about some money he owed me. We quarreled some, but not seriously. Next thing I know is I blacked out. Must have been something I had in a drink. When I came to, the place was crowded with cops. What about the diamonds they found on you? I don't know anything about them. I don't know how they got there. Oh, that looks bad. They must have been planted. That's the only way I can figure it. Well, why'd they pick on you? I guess I was the fall guy. I made several trips a month to the continent for the travel agency. I made smuggling look easy for me. Whoever it was must have known the cops already had a line on Williams. Tying us both up was a natural. Was all this brought out of the trial? Yeah, theory, theory against hard established facts. Look. Was there anything at all you remember while you were with Williams, before you blacked out? Yeah, there was something. What? That doesn't make much sense. Tell me anyway. A few bars from a song. While I was talking to Williams, I seemed to remember a girl's voice singing. What girl? Yvonne Durant. She works at the club. Oh, yeah, I know her. Her father's a ship's captain. Right now, he works for the Paris branch of the travel agency. Every time I went there, he gave me presents for his daughter. Candies, mostly. Time's up, son. Is there anything else? No, I, I'm afraid not. Okay, kid. Don't give up holding. I'll be... You're gone, but you're everywhere. By the fire in your favorite chair. I still remember journeys to places far and wide. Do come in, Mr. Stevens. Okay, Chicago, let's have a talk. Why didn't you tell me where Larry was? Aren't you being a little foolish, Mr. Let's talk about Larry. Why didn't you tell me he worked for you? Because he didn't. You're lying. Larry worked for you and you know it. He was hired by the man they say he killed. Would you be good enough to let me go? Okay. Believe it or not, Mr. Stevens, but the Gay Mask Club is quite respectable. Owing to this unfortunate affair with your brother, it received a certain amount of notoriety. All I want now is to let the past bury the past. Does that answer your question? It answers one of them, your playmate answers the other. What do you mean? Never mind, tell Laughing Boy you're busy. I'm not busy. You want now? Frame my brother, Satago.
want a bother going on your side. I'm telling you, Chicago's a crook and he framed my brother. If you guys were on the ball, you'd pinch him instead of me. All right, boys, you can go. Sit down, Mr. Stevens. Have a cigarette. No, thank you. I just try and take things calmly. I know the sort of strain you're under, but you're not helping matters by making a lot of wild accusations. Okay, Inspector, maybe I will have that cigarette. Now, you're a sensible man, Mr. Stevens. Why don't you try and keep out of trouble? I'm not in any trouble. You will be if you go on this way. You say the Satagas a racketeer and that your brother's been unjustly convicted. But what reasons can you give? None yet. Well, then. Hello? Yes. Very well. Yes, I've got Stevens here with me now. All right, I'll tell him. Satagas dropping his charges against you. All right? Yeah, I expected that. You can go. Thanks. You all right? Yeah, I expected that, too. You expected what? Huh? Oh, I'm okay. Thanks. I can see what happened. Sorry I missed it. That man means trouble, so you better watch your step. Where are you taking that? Oh. Okay, I'll have him picked up. Fourteen Cranley Square, please. Remember what I said to you? Watch my step? Sure. Tell me something, will you? Mm-hmm. Did Larry Stevens murder William? You heard what the jury said. I heard what you said. Hello there. Well, I'm sorry. What do you want? Mind if I talk to you for a moment? Well, I... It'll only take a moment. I saw Dave Leary. We had a nice little talk. I've been having quite a few of them lately, and they're getting me no place fast. You'd be surprised. That's too bad. Maybe you can tell me this. Why is Satago so worried about me? Is it because I'm trying to save an innocent man from hanging? I really wouldn't know. You don't have to say anything. Just knock once for yes and twice for no, and we'll keep our little secret inside these four walls. What's the Targo got on you? Why is he so worried about me? Is that your father? Yes, it is. Is this the way you treat his friends? I don't know what you mean. Look, I have an idea you can help me if you wanted to, so why don't you? Could be for two reasons. A, you're disinterested. B, you're too interested. Somehow I figure it's not A. You're talking in circles, Mr. Stevens. You were in the club the night of the murder, and you won't even try to tell me what happened. Do you mind? Okay, sister, have it your way. Oh, darling, I'm sorry I... Well, good evening. Oh, this is Mr. Stevens, Miss Dryers. How do you do? Mr. Winslow's secretary, I presume. You have an excellent memory, Mr. Stevens. It's very flattering. Not at all. You left an indelible impression. Thank you. A small world, isn't it? And it takes all sorts. Well, a solicitor, secretary, and a singer in a nightclub. I didn't know you gals were so chummy. Oh, we've been friends since childhood. Well, I bet you played nicely together. People used to say it was sweet to see us. I'll leave you two to reminisce about the happy, carefree days of childhood. Don't get too nostalgic. I'm leaving myself in a moment. Perhaps I could drop you somewhere. 
Thanks. I'll wait for you downstairs. What's he doing here? Oh, he just called. Obviously. You know, there's something about you bothers me. Really? You're not in Satago's racket from choice, are you? No, it's the only excuse I have for being in it at all. That's what bothers me. One word of advice, darling. Don't forget which side you're batting on. Batting? Oh, I'm sorry. National games always confuse me. I mean, pitching. I just thought I'd mention it. So sweet of you to work with me. You've got something for me, haven't you? Well? It's gone. What do you mean, it's gone? I don't understand it. I, I brought it in with me. You don't suppose... You're going to have some explaining to do. Hi! I thought you were going to wait. I was in a hurry. Okay, jump in. I'm in a hurry myself. You saw your brother, I suppose. Yeah, I saw him. How was he? How was he? What do you think you'd be if you were going to hang for somebody else's murder? If it was somebody else's murder? It was. Where'd you meet Yvonne? The Gay Mask Club. Didn't she tell you? That's quite a good spot if you happen to be on the right side of the manager. Well, what happens if you're on the wrong side? He can be... Very discouraging. Here we are. You should have mentioned that I don't live here. I should have told you that I do. Would you like a drink? No, oh, thanks. What are you afraid of? Me? Mm -hmm. Just a drink. Night. Good night. Taxi, sir? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Butler Hotel. Yes, sir. That's what we want, boys. All right, do it. What's the idea? I'm leaving. There's still a little matter of a contract. The kind of contract covers too wide a field. It's a little late to think of that. It's never too late. What about your father? You're not looking after him so well. We'll take our chance. Okay, sweetheart. Last night's little episode could have been a mistake. Don't make another one, will you?
How goes it? Okay, fine. Yeah, well, you keep him hot at it. I'm just gonna have a look at my patient. Yeah, keep that guard up, son. Come on, chum. Wakey, wakey. Mm -hmm. I brought you some black coffee. You know, that stuff with no head on it. Now, 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 take it easy, take it easy. Don't dash about. You got a touch of the brewer's rash. Hey, where am I? Hang over hall. As a matter of fact, it's my little home. What do you think of it? Oh, lovely. How'd I get here? Oh, now, don't tell me you can't remember anything. I don't remember coming here. You better watch that cut. As a matter of fact, a couple of fellas came across your past out in an alleyway. Found my card in your pocket and brought you in. Set me back a quid. You must be mixing your drinks a proper treat to get in that state. If you feel like one this morning, all you've got to do is just wring out your shirt. You don't just drink it, chum, you wear it. Oh, wacky, I was softened up. Eh? Beat up, pushed around, you know. Well trounced. Oh, you don't want to fall in with that luck. Remember what they always say, one man's mitt is another man's poison. <laughs> <clears throat> well, if it ever happens again, boy, always remember to turn the other cheek and bring your knee up sharpish when you do it. Do they pinch anything? Uh, not money. Well, then follow you, son. That's all tied up with Larry and a little number called Lorna Dryhurst. Dryhurst? All right, Winslow's secretary. Mean anything to you? Winslow? You know what you ought to do, chum, don't you? What? Get in touch with the Roses. The who? The police. Here's your coffee. Tell them what happened. Thanks. I want to call Winslow first. Have him come down here. Well, that's a blur, chum. Help yourself. I want to send a telegram to Mr. John Durant. Did you get a chance to look in that box? Uh, not the way that cabbie was driving. I got a hunch it was loaded, though, Dave. You think it might have been diamonds? Uh, it could be. Makes me sore. It's walking right smack into it. Yeah, but you can't trust women. You just can't trust them. Yeah, say that again. Mm, time's running short. We'll have to think of something quick. You look as if you could do with a drink. What'll it be, Brandy? Yeah, fine. You know, it's a funny thing. Whenever I see a bottle of brandy, it reminds me of my old man. He thinks he's Napoleon. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Good luck then, Josephine. Mr. Winslow, you managed to find us then. It's through here. It's Mr. Winslow, Gregor. This is a bit unusual, Mr. Stevens. Why bring me over here? Sorry, I wanted to talk to you about your secretary, Miss uh, Dryhurst. How long has she worked for you? About a year. Couldn't you have asked me that over the telephone? Uh-uh. She's mixed up with Sotago's mob. She's what? When you arranged my brother's defense, she reported every move you made back to Sotago. Feel like a drink, Mr. Winslow? No, thanks. How do you know this? Something has happened that's convinced me she helped frame my brother. She and Sotago. What's happened? I found out the Gay Mass Club is a receiving depot for smuggled merchandise. Chiefly diamonds. Can you prove this? Last night I got worked off of sticking my neck out. I had something in my hands that would give me all the proof I needed. I bet that was last night. It's quite right, Mr. Winslow. He was dumped like a sack of potatoes when they're done with him. Look, Winslow, I got about 18 hours to get what I need. I may need longer. Will you do something for me? Of course. Get me a stay of execution. Without some form of concrete evidence, that would be impossible. Well, you could try, couldn't you? The only person who can grant a stay of execution is the Home Secretary. But he can do nothing unless we can present him with new evidence. Uh, dig up something. Yeah, wait a minute, I've got an idea. The Home Secretary, he's a fan of mine. He comes to all the fights. Now, what about me ringing up and asking as a personal favor? In view of what you say about my secretary, I suppose I'd better have watched. Yeah, who by? A detective agency? Oh, sure. They'll tell us all we want to know in about a year. You staying here, Mr. Stevens, or can I drop you somewhere? Well, thanks, my hotel. Well, so long, Dave. Thanks for everything. Any time, pal. I only wish I'd been there last night. They may not have had quite such an easy time. Add my key, please. Oh, Mr. Stevens. Uh, it's already upstairs, sir. Your room's open. What? 
Yeah, I hope it's all right, sir. The young lady said it would be. Oh, she did, huh? <laughs> what young lady? Well, she didn't give her name, sir. Well, that's what I call service. Thanks. May I come in? Sorry, but you're a hard man to find. Thanks for the party last night. I haven't been in a party mood for quite a while. Tell me about yours. It happened right after I left your flat last night. Don't tell me it slipped your mind already. Hadn't entered my mind, but I guessed you'd run into trouble. You guessed? It was silly of you to take that box of candy while Lorna was around. Maybe you didn't know it wasn't for eating. What's on your mind now? I've come to tell you I'd like to help. What with? A knife? I haven't any. Take a look. Uh -huh. It's probably in my back already. Look, stop me if I'm wrong. Your father sends you candy by special courier. And each box contains a nice hard center that glistens. Right? Yeah, that's right. You see, my brother was one of the fall guys. But I didn't put a tag on the can until I realized you wished I hadn't seen your father's picture. After that, it fell right in the line. Who peddled the diamonds, you? I just take care of the wrapping. Lorna picks it up, and after that, the candy and I lose sight of each other. Boy, you sure must be proud of your old man. I like to see him stay alive. Yeah? Why? I don't blame him for feeling sore. But believe it or not, I really want to help. Oh, how nice. Before I met you, I accepted the verdict on your brother like everyone else. Did you? Probably because I didn't think enough about it. Except to feel sorry for a nice guy. But yesterday, I began to wonder. This morning, I remembered something. My father was in the club the night Williams was murdered. Did you see him? No, but last week, he mentioned a song number. One I sang that night for the first time. I thought he was in Paris. What was the name of that song? No Way Out. Well, that's appropriate. Larry heard it, too. He was in a soundproof room. That means William's door was open before he blacked out. Somebody went in there after Larry. Maybe even your father. If my father murdered Williams, he won't be coming from Paris to help us prove who did it. You mean you sent for him? Yes. Okay, so he didn't murder Williams, but he was mixed up with Chicago, and he dealt the cards from Paris. Nice boxes of candy, only not for eating. I passed the candy. Why don't you accuse me? Oh, this is addressed to you, sir. Hmm? Who brought it? I don't know, sir. I was out of the office for a few minutes and I found it there when I got back. Play this, Mr. Stevens. You'll find it of interest. James Smith. What is this, a gag? I don't know anything about it, sir. Okay, here. Thank you, sir. If you want a radiogram, sir, there's one in the lobby. Thanks. Know anything about it? No, but the man says play it. All I can do is explode. Please don't be surprised at my talking to you in this unusual fashion. There's a reason, believe me. My name is James Smith, and I believe I am in a position to help you and your brother. If you'd like to contact me, Go to the Jiffy Snack Bar in Nelson Street. Ask the barman, whose name is Percy, to put you in touch with me. He'll tell you where I can be found. Jiffy Snack Bar, huh? Are you going? Of course. Nothing else I can do until I see your father. Look, when he arrives, take him to your flat. I'll phone you. All right. We'll meet at Dave's gym. Don't worry, I won't let you down. I don't know why, but somehow I believe you. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Well, you know how it is, Mr. K. Take last year's derby. I've got a father on Nicholas II in which. So I put all my money onto the next race. What happens? Down goes the lot. Oh, good morning, sir. And a very nice one, too. What do you like? Uh, coffee. Uh, black or white? Black. Black. Then there was the dog last night. Now, that was a turn up for the bull. Number two comes out of the track like a rocket. It gets to the first bend, and then it lays down. I've seen a beetle run faster. 
There we are, sir. Forbes, please. Hey, um, your name Percy? Oh, yeah. How'd you guess? Yeah. You know a guy named uh, James Smith? Uh, are you Stevens? Right. Well, Jim is expecting you. Now, just across the street here, there's, a, there's an alleyway. You go down to the end of it, and you find yourself in a courtyard. Directly opposite that, there's a door. That's the back entrance. To what? Go in there. You'll find out. Now, the Grand National. Four years ago at the Grand National, I've gone up to Liverpool. I'm not kidding, but saved a year for this. I get up to the course. There's nowhere to live. It's pouring with rain. There's a Mr. James Smith waiting here to see me. Yes, in Mr. Satarka's office. You know the way, don't you? Yeah, I should. Come then. Ah, Stevens. Smith? Yes, yes, sit down. What's the matter? Nothing. Just cautious. Oh, no need for you to worry. You're in no danger. Oh, does that mean you are? Perhaps. I expect you're wondering why I brought you here. Naturally. A cigarette? Oh. No, don't bother. Ah, that's all right. Thank you. Afraid my affliction makes me rather clumsy at times. Yeah, well, how did you know where to contact me? Well, if you don't mind, I'll do the talking. Time's getting rather short for both of us. About the murder. Williams was a very difficult man to work with. I should know, I'm accountant for the club. Williams quarreled with a great many people. But one quarrel in particular I remember. I'm listening. It may not mean much, but Williams' death did this man quite a bit of good. What man? Sotago. Mario Sotago. Well, if you knew all this, how come he didn't go to the police? Mr. Stevens, you'll see how it is with me. I'm in no position to move much. Literally a sitting target. If William's death was, as I suspected, some sort of gang murder, I'd be in danger, to say the least. That's why I took this rather complicated way of getting in touch with you. Are you willing to make a statement to the police now? Perfectly willing. Not that far. Why not? Every word you say on that line will be heard by someone on the switchboard. Phone from outside. What about the doorman? He saw me come in. Charlie's all right. I fixed him. You're sure you'll be all right if I leave you alone? Quite sure. But get back as quick as you can. See, Mr. Smith? Yes, yeah, thanks. Oh, just a minute. I'll get you in a raffle. It's for a good cause. Look, I haven't got time right oh, now. It won't take you a second. Might a minute. Oh, I've got him here somewhere. Well, make it snappy, will you? Oh, I've got him... <laughs> got him in the other trousers. Well, I'll see you another time, then. What's the trouble? Who put through an emergency call? Oh, I did. What's it all about? Well, there's some funny noises in the office. This fellow came out and I stopped it. What? He's trying to bribe me to keep my mouth shut. Now, can you see me taking a bribe? No, never. Well, Mr. Stevens, it's your move now, Inspector. I can't think of a thing. I think we'll take a look at the office. Uh, look, I came down here to see a guy named James Smith. He's in his office now. He's trying to be funny, Inspector. There's nobody here that name. This guy's nuts. I just left him. Just a minute. Come on. You two. Well, when I have to shin you in the office, I'll don, 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 don. And when this geezer jumps out, I'll nabs him. He's been here before making trouble. I remember. Thank you, sir. I remember something, too. I was just going to phone you. Phone me? Why? Well, the guy we're going to see can explain. Maybe it's just as well things worked out the way they did. Here we are, sir. Mr. Stargo. So you're going to phone me, were you? You're a little late thinking that one out, weren't you? I don't get it. I was only in here two minutes ago, talking to a guy named Smith. All right, McBride. The usual routine, phone the yard. Yes, sir. You better wait here. 
I didn't even know Sotago was here. It was only this guy Smith, and he couldn't have left. He was a cripple. I see. I was on my way to phone you when this guy stopped me in the lobby. Operator. I, I just didn't get a chance to. You didn't. Look, Inspector, if you'd come with me, I can show you something. And it better be good. Well, Mr. Stevens? Now, listen, Inspector, I had a message to come and see this man Smith. I guess he wasn't a cripple, or else he couldn't have left. He must have killed Sotago after I'd gone. Very ingenious. Let's get along. Inspector, just let me take you to a place called the Jiffy Snack Bar. Why? So I can prove my story. Jiffy Snack Bar, where's that? On the other side of the block. All right, get in. Jiffy Snack Bar. Hey. Oh, this isn't the man in the sector. There's another fellow who works here named Percy. Where's the other barman? Well, I'm the only one who works here. Wait a minute, where's Percy? He was here only 15 minutes ago. Well, there's no one called Percy in this bar. And 15 minutes ago? Well, I've been here all the morning. He's crazy! Hey, wait a minute, Inspector. This man was here when I came in. He must have seen me. Excuse me, sir. Do you recall seeing this man here this morning? Are you talking to me, sir? Yes. I'm afraid I haven't seen anybody in here this morning. I haven't seen anybody in years. Stevens, I think we better be getting along. Come on. I don't know what I can do or say to convince you, but I'm being framed, left, right, and center. Why? Why should these people want to frame you? I was digging around about Larry. I was on to something, too. I guess they figured I was getting too hot and they wanted me out of the way. So far, you haven't shown me one thing to prove your story. And you must admit it's a pretty good one. Look, Inspector, will you give me one more chance? Drive me to the Butler Hotel. It'll only take a few minutes. All right, Stevens. Butler Hotel. Uh, here it is. When I played it, it gave me the message. This will put everything in the line. record I left it here about a half an hour ago. Not to my knowledge, sir. Are you sure? Quite sure, sir. Come on, Stevens. Which way did Stevens go? Mr. Stevens? Well, I haven't seen him, sir. What's he? He, he might be in the, uh, the, uh... Circle the block. you tell me you were in the club the night Williams was murdered? Well, you were, weren't you? I was, yeah. Why keep it a secret? Well, naturally, after what happened, I didn't want to be questioned. Do you think Larry Stevens murdered Williams? I... I don't know. You don't think so, do you? This is Mr. Rand. Are there any messages for me? No, miss. 
Thank you. If you went to the police, what did they do to you? They could put me inside for about five years. But if you told them everything you knew, Gregor might get a stay of execution. Yeah, but five years, honey. A man's going to hang for somebody else's murder. Does five years mean more to you than the rest of his life? Maybe there's nothing you can do to save him, but if there is, can you live with yourself after he's dead? I can do it. All right, so you can't go to the police, but you can tell Gregor Stevens who he takes his orders from. Well, let's get Stevens. He'll figure if there's anything to work on. Will you do it? I tell you, Yvonne, well, I can't afford to get mixed up in this business. You don't know what they're like. I should know. I worked with them long enough. I am grateful to you, Yvonne, but there are other considerations. I got a position to hold on to, and I'm not a young man anymore. A man's going to hang tomorrow. I know, it's terrible. I wish there was some way, but believe me, I... I'll tell you, your own selfish heart, but tomorrow a man dies. Stop saying that. Does it hurt already? Then imagine what it'll do to you after he's dead. If you don't come with me to Gregor Stevens, I'll go to the police myself. And I've never meant anything more in my life. Hello. Yvonne, Gregor, is your father there? Yes, he's here now. We'll be over in 20 minutes. Fine. Look, something's happened. Don't use your own car. They may be tailing you. Take a cab. That was Stevens. Are you ready? Well, they're on the way over. What do you think you're doing with the old man? I'll take him to Winslow, I guess. Get him to make some kind of a statement if he has anything worth listening to. Here they come now. Wait a minute now, hold it. Take it easy. All right, now. Okay, Matt, thanks. This is my father, Gregor Stevens, Dave Murray. Oh, yeah. I've explained everything to him. He's going to do all he can to help. Look, we're running out of time, so I'd appreciate anything you can tell me. Oh, you can speak freely in front of Dave here. He's a friend of mine. I see. Well, so far as I know, this smuggling ring is owned by one man. His name is Charles Harris. Harris, huh? It runs a travel bureau. The Worldwide Travel Agency? Yeah. Did Harris kill Williams? I don't know. Was it Sotargo? I tell you, I have no idea. Uh, if it was Sotargo, it's going to be tough trying to pin a murder rap on him. Why? Because he's dead. Jiffy snack bar gag was a ruse to get me into Chicago's office. I'm wanted for his murder. For his murder? That's right. Right now, half the police in London are looking for me. Well, there's only one thing to do. Go to Harris's office and... And what? Uh, try to force his hand, accuse him openly. There must be some record in his office to pin him down to this racket. Well, I could try. There's a number one boy here somewhere. Someone runs this mob by remote control. He's the guy we got to find. Could be Harris. What do you know about Lorna Dryhurst? Very little. Yvonne knows her better than I do. I have an idea she's married, but apart from that... Any I... idea who, too? No, she said something... Well, it's worth checking anyway. We've got enough on Lorna to pick her up right now. It's a chance in a million, but if we could find out who she's married to... You mean it could be number one boy? It could be Harris. He's got the right front and contact for the job, and if he's married to Lorna, he's got the right wife. Look out! Recognize any of them? No. I wonder how they knew we were here. You can search me. We better get back. Did they get away? Yeah, please. I thought they'd be after me. I'm getting out. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. You'll be okay as long as you just don't panic. Look. 
I want you to go to my brother's lawyer. Tell him everything you know. How you get tied up with this, the works. His name is Winslow. Here's the address. I can't go on my own. They soak me up before I get there. They will go with you. Sure. No, I... You get to see Harris. Then maybe I'll have something to work on. Whatever I say won't come for much if you don't have something tangible to back it up with. Okay, but you can't stay here while you're waiting for me. Suppose I take him to my place. Yeah, that's the idea. Gregor can pick him up later. Matt lives on the barge up the river. It's unnatural. Where is it? Chiswick Moor. Is that all right with you? I don't seem to have much choice, do None of us have much choice. Now, look, if you run into any trouble, just call Winslow. I'll get a hold of Dave. Matt, take care of him, will you? Okay. What do you check on marriages in this town? Somerset House, I think. Good. Now, get over there and check on Lona Dry House, will you? I'll meet you in front of the uh, Worldwide Travel Agency at, uh, let's see, 3 o'clock. All right. Oh, Yvonne, thanks for all you're doing for me. I'm afraid I haven't been much help so far. You've been fine. Lorna Dryhurst, is this all the information you have about the lady? I'm afraid it is. I shall have to look it up for you. It'll take a little time. How long? About an hour. tickets to you. Well, you're coming back, aren't you? Well, why? <laughs> hey, well, we'd be absolutely lost without you. Right, you are. Goodbye. Have you taken a nature cure, Mr. Harris? Well, a perfect setup. Wonder how many men who worked for you suddenly found themselves working for Sotago? Until they got in the way, of course, like Williams or my brother Larry. I, I don't understand. No? First, you're going to tell me who killed Williams. If you don't talk, you really are going to be paralyzed. Going somewhere? Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris! You might need a little help. He's got the key in his pocket. Get him out the back way. Quickly as you can. Put him in my car. Wait for me there. Is that the police? Yeah. Will you send somebody to the... Sorry, it's a mistake. What's the trouble? Nothing. It's all right. Keep this to yourself, do you understand? Not a word. Yes, sir. Not a word.
brother, what a sucker I've been. And I had to put you on to him. And light? Sure. What did you find out about Lona? Well, I've got to go back to Somerset House. They have to check the records. Okay. We'll pick up your father first. I'm taking him right over to Winslow. We should have done that before. How much longer is he going to be? There's no telling. I think there's a mistake sending me down here. I feel safer if I was with people. I'm people, aren't I? I'm in crowds. That's it, I should have stayed in town. It's just too lonely. If they get wind of where I am. Don't worry, I'll look after you. Hmm. Have you got any matches? No, I haven't. I'll slip a shoe and see if I can get some. I'll only be a minute. <laughs> chasing those guys. He was pretty scared. I should have stayed with him. We'd have done a lot of things differently if you had known about Dave Leary. Look, Yvonne, there's still a good chance your father might try to call Winslow. I'm going over there to check. You can drop me off on your way to Somerset House. And Matt, take a look around for him. Do you see him? Tell him to call Winslow. I'll do that. Well, I didn't expect to see you. You know what's happened? I know that you're wanted for murder. The police been on you? They have. Where's your secretary? She's out at the moment. She had to go to the... How long will she be? About an hour. But what's that got to do? Sit down, Winslow. I got a lot to tell you. Now, I'll give you all the facts and we'll work back. It all starts out with a man by the name of John Durant. How far is it to Bedford Square? Well, you're a long way from there, sir. How long do you think we might care? About half an hour. Oh, thanks. But if Durant is important enough for those men to want to kill, why ever did you let him out of your sight? Because he told me I had to see Harris. He didn't think his evidence would be enough. So you went to see Harris and you gained precisely nothing. But I'm telling you, I found Harris. I found the man who murdered Chicago. But who's going to believe that? Stevens, for a man of your intelligence, I'm surprised you could be taken in so easily. I'm not the only one. I've been kicked around and double-crossed for three days, and that Dryhurst dame has had you buffaloed for two years. That I find very hard to believe. Look, I don't care what you believe. Hello. Hold the line. Durant. Hello, Durant. I'm at Olympia, BIF. What are you doing down there? I'm here because it's the one place they'll never think of looking for me. I feel safe for the first time since I arrived in London. Wait a minute. He's at Olympia. We better get down there. Let me talk to him. Durant, this is Mr. Winslow speaking. Go to the sailing boat section and wait. We'll come and collect you. How long will you be? About half an hour. Wait there until we arrive. Right. Try and make it sooner. In case of accidents, I'll get Inspector Haley to send a couple of men along. Sloan, please. Inspector Haley, please. Haley, this is Winslow. 
I think I've got something new on the Larry Stevens case, but I'll need your help. There's a man named John Durant waiting at the sailing boat section at the British Industries Fair. I want you to send somebody along to take care of him. Okay. Well, I'll know what to do. Okay, boys. This is it. Have you that information for me, please? What was the name? Dryhurst, Lorna Dryhurst. Oh, yes. Here it is. Thank you. Stevens, this looks like our last chance. Yeah, if it doesn't work out, I guess you'll be defending me next. That will be a pleasure. You rout him out if we lose him. You must be crazy. We'll never get away with it. In this crowd, use your loaf. They've identified the driver in that crash, sir. Who is it? A man named Harris. Is he dead? Yes, sir. And there's a young lady outside who would like to speak to you urgent. About the crash? She witnessed it. Show sure. her in. Yes, sir. This way, miss. Miss? Durant. Oh, sit down, Miss Durant. What can I do for you? Light suit, American cut. Looks like Stevens' description. Take Mr. Durant to my car, Sergeant, and wait for me. Very good, sir. Yes, sir? Anything new from Olympia? Nothing else from the officer who cited Stevens, sir. All right, inform the Olympia authorities. I want this message broadcast over their loudspeakers. Attention, please. Attention. If John Duran or Gregor Stevens are in the exhibition, they are asked to report immediately to one of the policemen at any of the exits. This is a police message. I will repeat that. Attention. He told the police he was here. Why are they broadcasting? They're using their own methods, I suppose. Yeah. 
Anyway, I think it's best we split up. There's more chance of finding him that way. Wait a minute. I think we better stick together, Winslow. Come on. This is the police Shot, but if your father hears the message, you ought to be safe by now. When did you realize Gregor was being framed for Satago's murder? I knew it all the time. Sometimes you have to be unconventional to get the quickest results. You heard of the Pied Piper of Hamlin? Well, Stevens was the Pied Piper, and the rats came out of their holes when they heard the tune he was playing. I had to take a gamble with Stevens. It was their only chance. Well, who murdered Williams and Satago? Crawson. He was working under Harris, and when Harris was killed, the king rat came out himself, and that's what I've been waiting for. Now we're gonna walk right past those cops, sweetheart. If you squeal, I'm gonna let you have it. Wouldn't dare. You ought to know me better than that. No, but I... This way. Williams, congratulations, Stevens. For what? That's a new evidence in connection with the murders of Williams and Satago. I thought we heard all the evidence in court. Not quite. We didn't hear that Lorna Dryhurst was the contact for the head of a smuggling ring. Did you pick her up? We arrested her at London Airport 20 minutes ago. She was waiting for you. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous? She's your wife, isn't she? At least that's what we learned at Somerset House. Sweden, you defended my brother, too. <laughs> man to find, Mr. Stevens. 